Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar this afternoon. My name is David Bloxham, the marketing manager at Software One. Today's session is looking at how applications, desktops and file sharing can be delivered from the cloud. Uh, we're here today with Alex Hill from Citrix, Anthony Austin from Microsoft and Stephen Palmer from our Software One services team. So before I hand over to Alex and Anthony to, to dis discuss today's topic, just a few housekeeping rules. Uh, as you may have noticed, as you entered today's webinar, you, you've been set on mute. Uh, this is just to ensure that the sound quality remains at, at an optimum. But we do encourage uh, interaction through the session. So if you do have uh, any questions, please uh, fire them across using the uh, chat panel or indeed the, the question box panel. Uh, send them through to us and we'll have a bit of Q&A at the end. So uh, if anything crops up through the uh, session, please uh, fire your questions across. So just a, a brief introduction to uh, Software One, those who are new to us uh, and we're new to you. So uh, we're, we're a global IT services and solutions company. We have uh, an expansive coverage across the globe for those who, who do have a, a multinational presence. And we do also have uh, that local uh, on-site delivery uh, as well in, in the UK. So Software One uh, and what we do and what, what makes us so different. So our, our approach is uh, known as software portfolio management. This really uh, covers our three main components around our, our commercial services, where we're looking at licensing and contracts, our technical services and road mapping, and also our software asset management and compliance services. This combined uh, approach helps us uh, bridge the disconnect between the technology choices, architectural design, and the licensing rules. So here is a, a, just a brief overview of some of the services that we have. We have Stephen Palmer on today's call, uh, and towards the end of the session, he'll just detail some of the uh, technology services that would uh, be relevant for the uh, session that we're covering today. So Alex uh, from Citrix, I will just now make you presenter and I'll, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, David. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so as David says, uh, my name is Alex Hall from Citrix. Um, for the purposes of today's webinar, we're just going to be talking about um, how we at Citrix are working with Microsoft around Azure and how we can help all of you on the call today to efficiently deliver your desktops, applications, uh, and data uh, out to your end users. Embrace the economies um, that Azure gives you and, and uh, We'll be talking about that as well as we go through and uh, from our perspective also then help uh, with Software One for you to be able to move, make that move across to Azure and to cloud-based services. So very quickly, we're going to go through kind of the shifts in data center trends. You know, why would you be looking at uh, public cloud in general? And then also we'll go on to um, why that's great for the Citrix products, but equally then why Citrix and Microsoft together, how we can give you agility and how we can give you data center agility with Azure. How we can then use um, Citrix portfolio and Azure to impact you with your apps and desktops, your data use cases and your security requirements. And then towards the end, although we'll keep this very high level, but we've got a lot of follow-up information that Software One can share with you, um, how we can put it all together. So how can we get things like ZenApp or ShareFile or our Netscaler VPX solutions working in Azure? And actually, the good news is Citrix and Microsoft have done most of the hard work for you in terms of getting that out there um, and making that work for you as businesses. So kind of to begin on the call today, well, if we're looking at the market and we're looking at what we're seeing within our customers and what we're seeing in the market um, as a business, there's a big shift in data center trends. Now, there's a lot of things that are driving the shift in data center. A lot of these areas are basically because IT is changing. So from our perspective at Citrix, you know, we're seeing a lot of centralization, obviously, because of the business we are. And I'm sure Anthony from Microsoft 
we'll talk about what they see as well around Azure as well um, in a second. Not only is IT changing, but what users want to have delivered and what the type of content story that they want to have delivered to them and the devices they want to use is changing as well. So you can kind of see at the bottom there. Commercial. Um, are changing and we have lots of change as well in terms of desktops, in terms of the types of applications we want to deliver to our users, you know, less potentially looking forward on-premise and more SaaS based and equally those that are on-premise, there'll be web-based applications and equally the type of devices we need to go out and deliver to are changing. So, you know, the Zenith at the moment is the, uh, the Apple iWatch, which I'm not so certain is a business tool, but certainly the smartphones and the tablets are key drivers um, for you to make your businesses agile, to make them productive, to make them cost effective as well. And, and time and time again, you know, we're seeing a lot of the same messaging from our customers like yourselves and we're seeing the same kind of challenges coming out from our customers that they want us So you've got all these areas of wanting to be able to deliver better IT, wanting to do it more cost efficiently, but equally at the same time, you've got to keep yourselves competitive against your competition, making sure you're delivering a great service and SLA out to your end users, and the best way of doing that is to mobilize your business, to make sure that users can access what they need to do their job from wherever they need to do it. And that isn't necessarily the office anymore, it isn't necessarily coming in from a corporate device to do that, it can be any device that they choose to pick up and use at any point within their working day. So that's driving a lot of shifts, the change in devices and also because now things are becoming more mobile, users want to be mobile, probably you as businesses want to be more mobile, to be more agile and more reactive to business, that's changing what we need to put in our data centers and it's actually helping you and helping lots of organizations look at a different way of running data centers, where we keep infrastructure, where we put our desktops, where we put our corporate applications, where we keep data and how we share data, and then how we bring in SaaS applications into all this. And that's all driving change in the data center. It's potentially for some of you is driving more infrastructure in the data center, and probably for all of you is driving how do we do this better? How do we look at using other solutions like Azure um, to go and host these infrastructures for us and give us great economies of scale, give us great benefits in terms of resiliency and great solutions for us as a business. On the left, you know, it's all the pieces around what's driving that change, which is bring your own device, whatever that may be, or bring your own choice, as we call it. Seeing more and more... Um, handsets come in that are not corporately owned, more and more tablets obviously, I'm sure you've seen this already, but more and more we're seeing different types of laptops come into business, but still need to be fed by the traditional Windows applications, the traditional applications that you run your business on and will continue to run your businesses on going forwards. So we need to help all of you, both us and Microsoft, deal with those issues and make sure we can do it as econ economically, sorry, and as easily as possible whilst also getting hold of the right resource for you and your users at the right time. So if you look at this, and this is um, a couple of uh, pieces from Forrester uh, business research that we've um, looked at and we use these to kind of understand what we need to come and provide to you as customers and how we come and talk to you from a solution perspective. But if you look at this, yes, is how important were the following in your firm's decision to adopt cloud? Well, on-demand capacity and scalability, and I think we'll cover that, and that's got a great message with Azure and with Citrix and with what we can do around Zen App and Zen Desktop in Azure as well going forwards. Obviously, improving disaster recovery and business continuity. You know, any downtime nowadays, no matter how short it is, is perceived very badly within the business, so we need to make sure we can give you as much uptime as possible, but equally not drive you to a high cost model to do that as well. And again, you know, Azure and Citrix, we have a great solution for you in doing that. Improved infrastructure manageability and flexibility. What we don't want to do um, with all this is make it more complex for you to manage. So we don't want to add complexity into your infrastructure. We just want to make it very easy for you to go and manage and update and implement in Azure without having to from a perspective. Well, 
we are very much looking at building workspaces for you. So our message and our goal for all of our customers is to help you build a workspace. Now where that workspace sits is irrelevant nowadays and actually Azure is a great place to put this workspace infrastructure. And what the workspace is delivering is the common things that you and your users need to do their jobs. So it's the apps that you need, the Windows applications, but also now more and more the SaaS applications and the web applications that you need to deliver. The desktops that users still want in many cases because of familiarity, because of ease of use and because it's just what they feel they need to do their job. The data associated within the apps and desktops but also the data outside of the apps and desktops and then all the personal pieces and the collaboration pieces like adding in link for example to collaborate with users and be able to personalize this to your own users and that workspace we want to make sure is mobile i.e. can be accessible easily from anywhere from any device it's virtual so it can be put anywhere and again Azure is a great place to put this and we'll talk about that as we go through, but also to ensure that we keep things secure at all times as we deliver this out to our users. The security is very, very key in our priorities. So we have the solutions to be able to go and talk about all these areas and to be able to help you whatever type of user you've got, whether it's just a mobile access user, whether you've got a full fat design engineer user, whether you just want to give access to contractors and third parties, whether you want to in-source your call centers but actually make them work from home. Big trend we're seeing within a lot of businesses now is to bring those call centers back from different countries, bring them back to the UK but not have large rooms and large offices sat there running call centers actually allow those users to work from home and use recess, resource sorry, from the cloud to do that. PC refresh, corporate laptops, you know, managing corporate laptops more efficiently, branch and remote workers, giving them a great user experience and bring your own device. And that's really what we're trying to aim at with our workspace. But, you know, one size does not fit all. We want to make sure we can deliver all these areas. Now, the real focus for today around the Azure and, and the, the Citrix pieces, you know, managing the traditional app and desktop management in a more efficient manner. So some of you already know this, some of you are already doing that, but this process, but for those who don't know, you know, what we're doing a lot with Zen App and Zen Desktop is decoupling the traditional Windows desktop. So removing that tight coupling between apps and desktops and then data and devices and applications where you know at the moment on a PC or a laptop everything's pretty tightly coupled still and still locally installed. So you're forced to manage everything on a device level, um, you're forced to manage everything pretty much per device and it can be complicated and costly expensive to do. All we're trying to do with Azure and with Citrix is separate those pieces out when a user needs them to whatever device the user chooses to use them on. So we can start to manage single points in the cloud, we can manage single copies of the application, single copies of a desktop, we can keep data centralized but we can also deliver data out to our end users simply and easily and we can eliminate or reduce device support because we can switch our users to bring your own device you know use whatever device is available to you to the extent where maybe we can even fund devices for users to go and buy their own laptops for work achieve this you know what, what we really want to then take the next step on is deliver this as a cloud-based service if it's simple easy we can manage it from wherever it is in the world as an IT administration function. It actually then really lends itself very well to being put in the cloud because it's designed to deliver over any network, it's designed to be managed um, remotely in many cases, and it's actually a great solution for us to go and put into Azure. So before we get into more detail, I'd like to hand over to Anthony, who's going to take you through um, a bit more detail around the agility that's powered by Azure generally, and then we'll break it down into how Citrix and Azure working together can give you all great benefits. Sure thing. Thank you very much, Alex. Thanks very much. Um, if you just want to click on to the next slide. Um, afternoon, everyone. My name's Anthony Austin. I'm a technology strategist at Microsoft, um, and what that actually means in English is I work very closely with both customers and partners um, across a number of things, Office 365, Microsoft Azure, and something called the Enterprise Mobility Suite. So I'm a bit of a generalist, but I'm, a, I'm kind of a technical generalist, and a bit of a left to right view of quite a few technologies on the Microsoft side of things, um, Azure absolutely being one of them. Um, I'm just going to give you kind of a, a quick heads up, a quick overview, as it were, of kind of what Azure is, what it does, and the best way to approach it. But before I do, um, I know that Alex mentioned um, 
I, I'd kind of quickly talk about what we're seeing from our side. You know, technologically speaking, some of the trends in the marketplace, both at a local kind of United Kingdom level, but also at a global level. And and I I would absolutely agree on on most on most of the main drivers there. Device absolutely first and foremost, device proliferation taking the market by storm. Um, I also agree. Apple Watch is looking pretty cool. Is it going to be a business device? Don't know. We'll, we'll, I don't know. We'll, we'll probably get there one day. Um, but it's in that context, you know. We have uh, a mass, mass of different devices now. I'm not, I'm, I'm not just talking laptops and tablets. I'm also talking, you know, the Internet of Things. I'm talking there will be fridges and escalators that can talk to us and we can get data from. They are going to require applications to be able to scale out across different platforms, from different platforms to different platforms. And that in itself is going to generate a ridiculous amount of data. You know, if we have more devices on the planet than people, we know we have, they have to be powered and monitored and managed by our applications that can scale that large, and they'll have to be able to churn, consume, and create and manage the sheer volume of data that they'll create. And what we're going to need at the back end is is cloud infrastructure. Now, from from a Microsoft standpoint, and certainly from a Citrix, Citrix standpoint too. By cloud, I'm not just you know solely talking about a public cloud infrastructure. The Microsoft story is very much a hybrid approach. Our cloud, your cloud, someone else's cloud, doesn't really matter. What actually matters is you know getting insights from the it's, it's being productive, getting insights from data, getting it, getting insights from your your applications, and being productive on whatever device you happen to have with you. But from a public cloud platform, that's absolutely where Azure sits in. So if you just want to click over to the next slide, there, Alex. I'll quickly kind of describe what Azure is. So, in in a one-liner, as one sentence, Azure is Microsoft Azure is is Microsoft's absolutely massive public cloud platform. It's utterly huge. 19 data centers worldwide at the moment. Um, this slide I managed to pinch from Scott Guthrie, our kind of worldwide VP. Um, this is the slide that he he uh, he presented at our build conference four weeks ago. Big, big, big global conference, um, and it's only four weeks old, and already it's out of date um, because we've recently announced two more data centers to come online in Canada in 2016. So there's 19 data centers worldwide at the moment. That's eight in the U.S., one in Brazil. Brazil, two in Europe, that's Dublin and Amsterdam, there's two in the Far East in Hong Kong, Singapore, there's two in Japan, there's two in China through a third party, because China is of course China, um, and two in Australia. There's another two to come online in India too, so right now we have 19 data centers, and in the not too distant future we'll actually have 23. Each data center is between half a million, 600,000 servers large. And they're expanding at the rate of about 40,000 servers a week, um, which is roughly the size of Facebook. Facebook kind of tends to hover around the 40, 45,000 server mark. Um, so we're expanding pretty much at, at the size of Facebook every week, which statistically speaking means that Azure is doubling in size every six months. Um, that's that's the commitment to this giant platform that Microsoft is, is plowing in. Um, so it's utterly, utterly huge. Um, pretty much limitless resource from your perspective, but all of it is built from the ground up absolutely to be enterprise ready. Everything that we do is built with data sovereignty, it's built with security, it's built with privacy in mind. And as with Office 365, we have a trust center for Azure. So if you have any questions or any queries around how do I get my data in, what happens to it while it's in there, who owns it, what happens when a government requests for data, it is all there in the trust center. It's all written clearly out in black and white because Microsoft absolutely wants to be as transparent as it can be, which is um, why it's the first public cloud provider to abide by ISO 27018, which is the world's first um, kind of international industry standard for data privacy by a cloud provider. Um, and Microsoft is the first public cloud provider to abide by that. Um, so like I said, if you have any questions on kind of data sovereignty and, and what happens to my data when, it, when it's there and how do I get it back out, it's all there in the trust center. But in a nutshell, Azure is an absolutely massive public cloud platform, limitless resource to do pretty much whatever you like with it. If you just want to click on to the next slide there, Alex. Why are customers coming towards Azure? Why is Azure, um, why is Azure of interest to them, basically? Um, there's, there's many, 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 many reasons, um, but instead of presenting a ton of slides to you, I figured I would just consolidate it down into, into these three headlines here. Speed is one of them, um, particularly with some of the announcements that we, that we launched, or that we announced a couple of weeks ago at Build Conference and Ignite Conference regarding pretty much the unity between your on-premise data center and ours. I mean, with something like Azure Stack, which will have a preview coming in the summer, you can have exactly the same code 
as Microsoft Azure in your own data center. You can have 100% code commonality between your private cloud and our public cloud. So the speed at which you can kind of transfer workloads over, the speed at which you can quickly spin up resources, um, whatever it is you're looking for, from one or two virtual machines all the way up to an entire Share, SharePoint server farm, all the way up to a massive, you know, couple of hundred um, desktop environment hosted on Citrix. You know, it is easy to do. It's very, very quick. For those of you on the call that have used Azure before, you'll know how how easy it is. It, it's a very self-service kind of interface. There's a gallery of images. You know, you just what is it you're looking for? Just pick and choose, give it a name, tell you what, tell it where you want to deploy it, press go. Give it a couple of minutes, and bam, you've got yourself a virtual machine ready to go. Um, even quicker if you take into account in consideration things like scripting and automation, natively plugging into System Center. Um, when you start to automate the entire process, just see Azure as an extension of your own data center rather than some other public cloud that I have to kind of manage and get a grapple on using new technologies. Um, the speed and, and kind of ease at which customers can leverage this massive cloud platform is a big, big bus, uh, plus for them. Scale, we've kind of already talked about. You know, Azure is absolutely massive. Um, storage is something I spend a huge amount of my time talking about. Um, with each Azure subscription, you get 20 storage accounts. They're each 500 terabytes large, and if you run out, you can ask for more. Um, so as much as a challenge, um, I'm yet to meet a customer that actually consumes all of that. So it's utterly huge. It's very, very easy to scale up and scale down. But crucially, the economics come into play here. Because Azure is a public cloud service, you pay for what you use. And you don't, and you pay on a per minute basis, as opposed to a couple of other public cloud providers out there that like to charge on an hourly basis. We charge on a minute basis. So if you use, this is where the whole automation comes into play. If you're using 400 desktops, absolutely fine. As soon as it scales down to 200 desktops, you're only paying for the, you know, for the infrastructure that, that, of the, that's supporting those 200 desktops on a minute basis, um, or applications that you're running, or whatever it is you're running in the cloud. Um, pay for it far more flexibly than you ever could before, um, certainly when it comes to on-premise technologies. And if you just want to click over to my last slide. So there's speed, there's scale, there's economics. And then finally, there's the kind of technologies that Azure brings to the table. Now, we're here on a, on a, on a Citrix webinar, so we're going to be talking about this kind of from an infrastructure as a service kind of perspective, you know, hosting applications and delivering applications out onto any particular device you can um, of, of, of your choice. Um, and that's, that's kind of one small little segment of what Azure can do. At the absolute baseline, as you can see on the slide there, Azure can do infrastructure services. So that's spinning up virtual machines. And I'm not just talking Windows machines. I'm talking any machine you'd like. Um, we've got Oracle Images. One in five workloads is running on Linux. So, you know, we're very much, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but open source is, is quickly finding its way into the entire ethos of Microsoft. And I'm pretty excited about that. So infrastructure service, hugely easy to, to, to kind of get hold of, hugely easy to scale out, and very, very powerful when used in the right way. The next line up above that, above infrastructure service, you also have platform services. So, you know, consuming database services, HD Insight for things like, uh, you know, hosting petabytes and petabytes but bytes of data um, and getting real kind of tangible business intelligence out of it. I've seen some really cool projects where, you know, when you want a report done in five minutes instead of overnight, you know, you can scale out to 10,000 virtual machines or 10,000 compute nodes, get the number crunching done, scale back down, you pay for what you use and you get your report done much quicker. There's a huge amount you can get there from kind of data analytics, BI, at, at, a, at a platform level. And then, and then thirdly and finally, on top of that, there's tons and tons of other kind of application services, mobile services, website services, even identity services, you know, with Azure Active Directory. Um, there's tons and tons of different things that Azure can do, but what you'll increasingly find is that it's finding its way natively into everything else that Microsoft is doing. Windows 10, there's lots of native Azure goodness built in there, native integration into Azure Backup, native integration into Azure AD. Whatever workload you look at, Office 365, um, System Center, uh, what else, Windows Server, like there is going to be, certainly from a Microsoft perspective, very little differentiation between your private cloud and our public cloud. So the idea being is that you absolutely have the tools and the flexibility, as we're talking about today, to pretty much deploy applications and deck desktops and file sharing solutions to wherever you want. The choice is entirely down to you. Um, and that, 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 that's a pretty exciting time. That's a different, de definite different message, for, certainly from Microsoft of the past. So I'm, I'm kind of five minutes in. Quick introduction to what Azure is and what kind of what it does. It's a massive, massive cloud platform. 
incredible global reach, expanding at an incredible rate of knots. And this year alone, we've had, I think, 524 different product releases and announcements and improvements. So it's, it's, we're in a new world now where you don't have new products every three years. You have new stuff all the time, every single month, new features, new functionality, new ways of doing things. So it's powerful. It's exciting. It's incredibly scalable. Um, and I'll hand back to Alex to kind of talk about how Azure and Citrix work together um, to give you the best of both worlds. So I'll hand back to you, sir. Thanks, Alex. Moving across to Citrix, and how will, well, how can, sorry, um, Citrix and Azure impact you um, directly? Because you've obviously seen the benefits of Azure. You probably. Diffusions and mobile as well. Um, one of the things we're determined on and very focused on, and very much along the lines of you know what Nancy is saying about Microsoft, is we see ZenApp and Zen Desktop as a great cloud technology, and it's there. And there's lots of features now built into this technology around hybrid cloud provisioning. There's a lot of work we're doing around something called Workspace Cloud um, Services, which is coming and will be part of uh, uh, going on to Azure as we go into this year and next year. How does that affect you today? Well, firstly, you know, we've got some really good areas we can use that's already pre-defined for your own using non-production services such as test and dev in Azure. And, you know, using Azure as part of your upgrade strategy because we know a lot of you are potentially looking at upgrading Zen App and Zen Desktop from 5.x or 6.x into the 7 six or seven five area, um, using Azure as your test bed to begin with, but then also potentially moving across to Azure as you do a parallel migration is part of what you may want to be able to use the solution, the solution sorry, specifically for um, Citrix at the moment as well. Plus, you know, we've got a lot more around being able to burst to the cloud. So using technologies that we now have in the product, but also will add to in Workspace Cloud. Um, and you're running on load, come back to examples later of where you may use this, um, we're able to automatically burst out to Azure um, using some of our technologies to be able to do that. So using that and using that more going forward as well when we get into Workspace Cloud, or works, um, which we can talk about towards the end, um, will help you to be able to automatically use all that great capability and all that great um, infrastructure and using you know, the mixture of the hybrid cloud to deliver that is a great way forward as well. We can use data, so we can help you access data, and again, you know, Nancy was talking about um, the hybrid solution with the private and public cloud, and we know there's going to be data in both, and we've got a great way of bringing those two data repositories together, um, and then adding in things like OneDrive, as well as Azure and on-premise, using something called ShareFile, we can start to aggregate all those data stores and give you great control, but also security um, over your data, even when it's on a non-managed personal consumer device that we're seeing more and more of, and I'm sure you are within all your businesses. So we can keep your apps and data secure, we can meet your regulatory compliance, and we can give you some great, what we call contextual based access, which we'll come back to. And again, you know, we want to help basically meet some of the IT challenges you have specifically around Citrix. So we know that you're probably looking at upgrading, and we've got some great new releases, and again, I'm very similar to Anthony, we've got lots of product updates coming all the time. We're just about to get into the release of uh, Feature Pack 2 for those of you on ZenApp and Zen Desktop 7.6 with the Framehawk technology, which is a, a real game changer around delivering out to mobile and satellite uh, networks. So you may be looking at that, for example. So where are you going to go and put that test environment as you start to migrate across? Well, again, you know, non-production environments, and Azure is a great and perfect place to begin to start your journey um, of moving those systems across, um, using that to, to test those systems out is a great area. To be able to build out capacity, we're seeing a lot more capacity on demand, and part of the product structure now is to be able to burst if you need it to, as and when you need more capacity, not having to keep all that capacity uh, in your data center, but be able to burst as and when you need it. Keeping data secure, you know, we've seen data everywhere, and you know, uh, I think again, looking back to anti the Internet of Things, we're a great investor in, in the Internet of Things with uh, OctaBlue, so we're seeing data coming in from all areas into our OctaBlue pro OctaBlue products at the moment. But equally, and data is key to everything, and, and being able to report and access data efficiently is a big part of the value we can add. But getting access to that data and securely doing that big users of hardware, 
and we're big users of infrastructure in terms of Zen App and Zen Desktop. We're getting much more efficient. We can get hundreds of users per server now, but again, there's still a capex and the investment in those infrastructures to run Zen App and Zen Desktop on premise, which can be reduced by moving across to that Azure infrastructure as well. So if we start to dig into those areas, you know, desktops, apps, and data from the cloud, what does that actually mean? Well, very simply, you know, at the moment, probably most of you running Citrix are running it in an on-premise data center, and that's traditionally the way that we've run it. But what you're probably looking at is, well, do we need to move everything to the cloud, or do we need to start to take our steps towards the cloud, pick and choose what we want to put up there to begin with, and be able to understand what we can put there now and what we can't now move there now. So we don't necessarily think you're going to go and truck load everything and lift it off and move everything to the cloud, but what we think you'll be able to do is because of what we're doing with the product, because of what Zen App and Zen Desktop can do, from a Zen App and Zen Desktop perspective certainly, we want you to be able to, in essence, if you wish, move those systems and move them straight across to Azure because they're perfect candidates to be put there in terms of delivery back to users they are designed to deliver anywhere over any network at any time it's very easy to manage those systems when they're not on premise and what we're doing with the director and studio products within those solutions so actually they're great candidates to go and lift into Azure and we get we can start to deliver against your cloud initiatives we can give you better solutions around that we can give you um, utilization of use case appropriate deployments so you know the way that the products now can work is you don't have to go and put all your Zen app and Zen desktop into Azure in one go if there's certain areas of the business that uh, are more suitable to running on Zen app for example in a cloud environment you can put those users on servers in Azure, but keep some maybe heavier users potentially, or some users who have systems that need to be next to the data, and that data isn't going to move for the time being, you can keep them in the private data center. So you can still have that hybrid mix, but then start to manage them. Management at the same time by doing that. And we can start to help you change the infrastructure cost model. We'll give you some examples as we get to the end here. So a couple of examples about what we mean around you know, utilizing Azure to, to really accelerate and turbocharge your Zen App and Zen Desktop environments. And the first of those is you know, non-production environments. We are very much you know, releasing new versions of the product on a six-month basis now, at least, on Zen App and Zen Desktop. So you know, we're in June now on the second feature pack for Zen App this year. Now those are not fixes, they're actually features, they're new things we're bringing into the product, new investments. We've got some great new technologies coming up around um, some of the storefront technologies, for those of you familiar with those. But equally, we all know that you're going to have to go and test those and make sure they work for you and understand how you're going to set policies and implement those um, in your businesses. But you don't want that to affect your ongoing deployments of Zen App and Zen Desktop, for example, for those of you who already have the product. Equally, you know, putting new, new applications, testing if apps are going to work, we give you app DNA, but equally, you still need to do UAT testing on apps running on Zen App and Zen Desktop to make sure nothing's been missed during that session, and that, you know, will need specific hardware to run on, potentially. But all those solutions, all those ideas, all those areas can now be moved out to Azure. They can sit alongside your existing servers in terms of management, but it will give you a great solution to be able to go and run that. And it means that you can have you know, non-production environments running for whatever length of time you need them to. Um, you can get rid of all that legacy kit you're using potentially to go and do that, as some of you may have done before. And it gives you that on-demand pay-as-you-consume model that you may need, because you won't always be using those non-production environments. But equally, when you do, you can use it as a proof point to see, well, will this work in Azure in the first place? But also to give you that flexibility of being able to test, do parallel migrations, which is a great way of migrating, for example, off older versions of Zen App and Zen Desktop onto new versions as well. And from our perspective, you know, it just means that you can then start to have um, this idea of, you know, I've got an on-premise infrastructure. Um, I'll give you an example of those probably on on our 7.5 or 4.5 version of ZenApp. We have ZenApp 7.6, and for those of you who haven't seen it, a um, really good product. How do I upgrade? You know, that's the question. Well, the easiest way to upgrade will be to move to Azure. We can start to run our new ZenApp system in Azure, um, test it, make sure it all works, make sure we're all happy, make sure we get user acceptance testing, and then in essence, once you're happy with it, move everyone and start to point them at the new system. You can then start to you've got the choice of cloud and on-premise or both. With the products now, it supports both.
designed to work in those environments as well. So really low risk way of testing and migrating, but equally a great, great way to start to prove um, ZenApp in Azure that it will deliver from that infrastructure as well. And then when you're ready, simply switch off the on-premise, um, sorry, switch off the on-premise and move across. Also, what about disaster recovery? You know, these are tend to be systems running high-end, um, very much demand generating, sorry, revenue generating line of business applications. That's what we tend to see on ZenApp and Zen Desktop. So what happens if that data center goes down? Well, again, you know, we've got a lot of customers now using Azure and using uh, cloud as a way of running resiliency without the cost traditionally associated with co-locations, um, standby data centers, etc. And again, we're managing those, but we also have the ability to seamlessly transfer from an on-premise a biased infrastructure where most people are uh, delivering everything or accessing their Zen App and Zen Desktop systems or premise to Azure without anyone having to lift a single finger. Naturally happens, built into the product and understand to the point where if it needs to, it can start to increase capacity once we start to um, add in something called Workspace Cloud. So we get disaster recovery and you've seen from Anthony, you know, all the areas and all the different locations that Zen App can now sit in, so there is no chance that that won't be available available in Azure, so you're always going to have business continuity from your Zen App and Zen Desktop infrastructures, which means you can decrease your capital investment, you can still deliver a great service, you can still ensure that your infrastructure as it's upgraded, as it's moved, as it's changed, is still going to provide a great service to your users. You only pay for what you need and it gives you rapid availability and scalability as well. So one of the other things we're seeing more and more of is fluctuating capacity, right? being agile as IT. One of the things that um, we're doing a lot more of with our customers, like yourselves, is how do we actually just build IT that makes the demands of the business and not what the business could demand in the future, but then be able to be scalable, to be able to go and meet future um, capacity requirements. So we've got a lot of experience of this as a business. You know, we do a lot of work, for example, with some of the a lot of the online businesses, a lot of retail businesses, where this is key to their business model. You know, it's key to their IT investment going forwards. But if you look at you know the business requirement, it's fluctuating workforce numbers during the busy and quiet periods. You know, we're about to get into a quiet period, for example, um, which is summer holidays, where demand on Zen App and Zen Desktop running those. Uh, business applications is probably going to drop off slightly, if not significantly. You know, I work in Northern Europe and you can pretty much guarantee in August most of the Nordics are away. But there'll still be servers there chugging away, using resource, power, calling and demand. So, demand when it's needed, but then how do you also make sure you're not wasting money? Well, the idea is we burst to Azure or we use Azure fully when we need increased capacity or we just use Azure capacity as and when we need it. And again, built into the product, Zen App and Zen Desktop fully support this. You know, the example here, and this is typical of our retail customers, some of you may be in that space as well, that we've got our general most of the weeks year, weeks of the year, sorry, uh, demand capacity, but then suddenly Christmas hits us and if you like me, the day before Christmas, you start to think about shopping for Christmas presents. So everyone starts to shop, your demand on your users becomes higher in this example because they've got to answer more queries, process more orders, all those other things. So how do we increase capacity just to meet that demand for a couple of days a year? Well again, the easiest thing to do is burst out to Azure. And again, we've designed the product to work in this way to be able to let you burst out to the Azure cloud when additional capacity is required with very little um, inter intervention from your IT departments. So we'll sit there and understand where it can get more resource from. And again, to our businesses for around IT, we're using what we need to as and when we need to. It's available on demand and it's available almost instantaneously. It's as long as it takes to spin up the images um, of Zen App and Zen Desktop that you put in there in the Azure cloud as well. So, you know, a couple of examples there as well, you know, around migration, around capacity demand. What about securing data? How do you mobilize and secure data? because we want workforce to be productive wherever they are and part of being productive isn't just giving them the applications it's also giving them the data you know I go into a lot of meetings where I don't necessarily need to see Excel or see Word but I just need to see the data within Excel and Word and that isn't necessarily mean going opening Word through Zen App or, or opening my laptop and getting Excel open it just means to see the spreadsheet within something securely so 
and more and more data, you know, we're all more data focused, we're big data is part of the way forward, being able to analyze and understand and react immediately to changes in our business and to data that's being presented to us is a big part of how we keep ourselves competitive. Yeah, and what we can do is we can use our share file technology, which is again fully working in Azure, there's a validator design, there's a we use Azure now as a storage plane as well for our share file product and our share file product by the way, for those that you don't know, is our secure file sharing and data sharing solution which can mix with on-premise, it can mix with cloud, it can front end things like SharePoint and, and any other uh, solution, network drives, OneDrive as well. So it means we've got all our network shares we want to access, you know, your traditional network shares which may stay on-premise but again may move out to Azure, but then in Azure we've got SharePoint being run out there potentially, we've got all the data that PowerPoint and Excel need to access, we want to keep all that secure, and we've got everything on premise and on device at the moment. Plus they're using things like Dropbox, you know, and that's the big problem challenge that we still see, even though it's been around for a while in lots of businesses, you know, how do we get rid of Dropbox? Well the easiest way we can do that is to give users access to everything through ShareFile. So we can still have the network drives on premise, we can still have lots of data storage out in Azure, we can have SharePoint on premise in Azure, we can have OneDrive, we can have other data sources as well that we may need that could be anywhere else as well, but we can all bring it together and front end it through ShareFile. So wherever it is, ShareFile will give us the view from any device to that data securely, even to the point where if we're on a tablet or a smartphone, we can take that data offline securely. up to Azure security and secure way as well and we can do FIPS and common criteria compliance while doing this even though we're letting data access to consumers smartphones we can still protect it we can still control it and we can still friend end it so Azure is a great way of storing data and manage your data and we can then deliver the data securely by putting share file in front of it as well and we call this follow me data so the ability to have that data wherever you need it to make sure it's mobilized but equally make sure it's secure as well at all points, that so you have control of all that data as an IT administration function and you can pull it back wherever you need it. And we can still do this whilst meeting FIPS and common criteria, it's FIPS 140-2 um, we are compliant with, um, we can give you secure access to data from any device, we can aggregate different data stores, so not just Azure, but equally you may still have network drives that you keep in your own personal private data center or um, data that never leaves your data center for whatever reason, we can aggregate those alongside the Azure data as well and we can deliver against those corporate programs, we can let people do choice, we can let people flexi work on their own home PC, we can let people choose BYO but still keep data secure and delivered to those users securely. So if it's given I mean, it doesn't really mean a lot, um, but it's all available to you in Azure already. You can easily move this across. You know, from a very simple perspective, if we look at a uh, simple Zen app deployment on Azure, you know, that's all you really need, a couple of VMs. So it's eight VMs. we'll send out to you afterwards about Zen app and this instance to Azure. Now that's when it's in Azure, but don't forget, We'll also still start to deliver this out to the user, wherever the user is. There's VPX gateways on Azure as well that we can, you can spin up and, and start that will securely deliver this Zen app infrastructure out to the end users. Plus, we can also start to do a multi-site infrastructure. So we can keep the on-premise network and keep Zen app and Zen desktop on-premise if we need to it as well um, and mix the two together to deliver out to the end user. So very simple architecture. You know, we've done the hard work in making sure this architecture works in Azure for you. It's very simple to you to consume this and use this in your businesses to get some of the benefits we've just talked about earlier. And what size is your appliance? Well, you look at the sweet spot here, you know, 50 users per instant there on that 8 virtual CPU and 14 gig of memory. Um, that's on, uh, on a medium workload, we're getting just up to 30 users per instance. Now, how much does that instance cost you? Well, probably about uh, 14 cents per hour. Per user, and you look at how much it costs you to run those systems on your own. If it's a resilience, you're getting benefits of availability and all, all the great benefits we just talked about as well. So you can see there's some great cost benefits. We can get some great scalability in numbers of users. 
sizes as soon as you on turn up and send desktop as well now we do have to disclaim that that is sizing based on test environments you know you shouldn't be using that necessarily to go and size up your Azure environments just to make that clear you know work with software one to make sure you're getting the right size environments work with us work with Microsoft and we're more than willing to help you get the right size environments but to, that's really there just to give you some guidance on what you need and the costs associated with it so from some perspective, you know, hopefully you've understood how we can help you address some of the challenges you may have specifically uh, for today's session on ZenApp and Zen Desktop, but equally I hope you've learned uh, from Anthony a lot more about Azure and the benefits generally it will have to your business, you know, helping you run those non-production environments to test and migrate, helping you to scale cap capacity on demand, helping you make sure you can mobilize but secure data, and then also deliver IT as a service for around 14 cents per user per app. Obviously, there's a lot more to all this. There's a lot more information, and again, you know, you've got those guys from software with, with more detailed information, some more detailed data sheets on how this all works and how it all fits together. But from my perspective, that's it. Um, I think David, I'm going to, if you want to take back control of the screen, and then we'll probably do a little bit, then and open up for questions. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. So let me just uh, bring up our screen again. So thank you very much to, to Alex and, and Anthony for, for taking us through that. Just a reminder that um, if you do have any questions, we do have uh, some time available for Q&A, so please use the uh, chat box to uh, send us any questions. Uh, I'll now hand over to uh, Stephen Palmer from our, our service to, uh, services team just to, uh, to outline some of the services to assist um, with this sort of uh, technology. Hi, thanks for that, Dave. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Steve Palmer, so I work within the Technical Services Division here at Software One. Um, so we've heard today from a, a couple of the, uh, the core vendors that we work with there, um, and I really just wanted to, to highlight um, that while many of these great offerings we have, they really become sort of true solutions um, once they're designed and deployed in an effective manner. Um, that's why we here at Software One are investing very heavily in our technical services team. Um, we currently have around 110 consultants globally. Um, with 30 of those consultants being based here in the UK. Uh, we recognize that the earlier we can be involved in um, an opportunity, the greater the overall satisfaction of that solution will be. So with that in mind, I just really wanted to talk you through uh, the overall technical services approach. Uh, while we have the ability to deploy larger end-to-end -end solutions, our mantra is really all around giving customers the knowledge that they need to deploy and manage solutions um, with having just the right amount of level uh, of touch from ourselves um, to, to suit the requirements of their business. Um, so as you should be able to see on your screens now, there's the uh, the TSD uh, approach slide. Um, so as I said earlier, we can be involved, uh, the, the earlier we can be involved really, the more positive uh, the overall outcome of the solution will be. Um, so in an ideal world, we'd be looking to get involved here at this sort of envisaging stage here at the beginning. Um, and typically that would be a sort of one day on-site type activity, a chalk and talk. Um, type activity where we propose, we look at the proposed solutions, um, look at how that maps the, the, the requirements that you have um, and start to, to make a, an informed decision around um, what solution would be right for you. Uh, moving on from that, we go into the, uh, the assessment phase here. So following on to the assessment phase is really just taking a more in-depth uh, look at the existing environment, um, how that maps to the proposed solution, so looking at sort of transition readiness, uh, upgrade migration paths, consolidation, and so on. Uh, and following that, we go into the uh, the alignment phase. So the alignment phase is uh, really just a, a sort of proof of concept, if you like, to ensure that the overall solution meets the requirements of the business, uh, making sure that it aligns with the requirements of the business and what you're looking to actually achieve. Following the alignment phase, we, we go into the design phase, uh, which is really where you're looking to provide a, a, a proactive high-level design um, with architecture and migration planning, which will be used um, and referenced throughout the, the deployment phase. Um, following that, you can see the accelerated transition box, which is a, a different color to all the other boxes there. And the reason I wanted to, to kind of highlight that was because um, here at Software One, where we really offer some core value around the whole solution deployment piece is really um, the, the speeds that we can do things at because we've we've got um, a great depth of experience of deploying solutions in various different environments, various different technologies. Um, over that time we've created a number of scripts and processes that enable us to deploy solutions um, at pace, so without rushing things 
um, but just you know various areas that we can create scripts and processes that enable us, for example, to deploy something in five days, where with another partner it might take 15 days because they haven't got those various processes and scripts in place. Um, so that's where we can provide some some real um, value as a, a solution provider and also that that global reach that I touched about earlier. Um, following that, we go into the um, the managed uh, and improvement slide. Um, so this is really just following the actual um, deployment of the solution. We understand that obviously once you've moved to cloud, that's not the end of the story. It's all about um, making sure that we're keeping in constant communication with you, um, understanding any technical updates, um, any additions to the, the various solutions um, that, that you purchased, maybe looking at health checks and optimization services, um, and also any managed services that might wrap around that solution um, to provide additional value. Um, that was all I really wanted to touch on today. As I said, my name's uh, Steve Palmer. I work within the uh, services division at Software One. I'm happy to take any questions uh, either directly or, or today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, so we'll, we'll just use this now as I appreciate we're sort of coming to the close of, of the webinar for, for um, any questions that have come in. Uh, again, please use this opportunity to uh, use the chat box facility to uh, send any questions uh, based on, on what's being discussed today. So I've, I've got one question that's come in. Uh, it's, uh, can you create separate networks in Azure? Um, can you create separate work networks? Is Azure firewalled from each other? E.g. one hosting a NetScaler VPX in one area, DMZ, and one hosting virtual Zen desktop servers. Is there anyone who would like to uh, answer that question? Probably have to check unless Anthony knows offhand. Uh, yeah, sure. Apologies, gents. I, I, I literally just lost connectivity as the question started. Luckily, I'm back on now. Um, <laughs> happy to take it again. Yeah, of course. So, uh, can you create separate networks? So, is Azure firewalled from each other? E.g., one hosting a NetScaler VPX in one area, and one hosting virtual Zen desktop servers. Yeah, you can do if you like. There's there's quite a bit of flexibility you can do with around virtual networking. Um, and there's even more flexibility coming with regards to things like multiple NICs um, per machine and being able to assign various different resources, um, kind of virtual static IP addresses so they maintain the same location on your network. So the, the, the short answer is yes. Um, and I, I, I would just encourage you to have a play around. Um, sign up for a free trial. I think you get 125 pounds of credit, I think, for 30 days. So we spin up a few VMs um, and off you go. Give it a go. Lovely. Cheers. Thank you, Ant. Um, that is currently no the, the only question we have. So, um, if uh, I'll, I'll just use this opportunity to to wrap up and uh, thank uh, thank everyone for joining the call today. Thank you to to Alex, Anthony, to uh, for taking us through today's session. Uh, for for anyone that has any sort of further questions that they think of afterwards, please feel free to uh, email them to myself. We will be sharing the slides afterwards. Um, also, you know, conduct with your, your account manager as well, anything that, that's of interest that, that's come from today's session. So thank you once again for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers.